It's David, right? That is David. He is now um, a pink panty cross-dresser. <laughs> Have you ever wondered, am I the a**hole? Welcome to Who's the A**hole, a grinder podcast where we're not just talking we're getting into it. I'm your host, Katya, and I'm here to probe deep into your juiciest, messiest stories. So bend over, ladies, because I want to see the receipts. Who's the asshole? Hello, hello. Welcome to Who's the Asshole. I'm your host and resident asshole expert, Katya Zemlachikova. And today, we have the distinct honor, pleasure, and privilege of having the most, I guess, the most royal guest to date, Her Majesty, the Queen of Melrose. I'll take it. Hi. Yeah. Oh my God. Your Grace. Thank you so much. Your Grace. Thank you. It is truly an honor, Your Grace. Um, she's a celebrity stylist, fashion designer, survivor. She has styled celebrities like Madonna, Mary J. Blige, Nicole Kidman, Beyonce, and Shaq. Yes. She's gone viral after spilling the tea outside of a Madonna concert and talking about all things Palm Restaurant. She's raw, real, and a big f***ing deal. I have to try to modulate my excitement because I just want to, like, rip your head off. Um, so how are you doing, first just of all? give it back. Yeah. All. Yeah. Just the how hair. Are... You know the hair, girl. I love the unit. Yes, thank you. It's my Christina Aguilera hair. Thank you very much. <laughs> so um, who I want to, like... You've worked with like high profile celebrities, so I'm gonna try to restrain myself from asking you like who's a b who's a you don't have to name names, but maybe you could do like Rhymesmith Bladonna. You know what I mean? Just oh, like okay. keep it kind of like vague. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um who like who <laughs> who in your story <laughs> who in your storied career, just to start, has been the most surprisingly sweet? Okay, so Beyonce is seriously like the sweetest. Really? Sweetest. Yeah, she came to me before Destiny's Child. No, no, after Destiny's Child when okay. she was going solo. And then she came in the store, and at my store in Melrose, and she's like, I'm here to see Cosmo. And I'm like, oh my God, that's Beyonce. And I literally, I'm not starstruck. I almost fell off the chair, yeah. you know? Yeah. So she goes, I need some clothes. I'm doing the cover of Ebony Magazine. Mm -hmm. And so I arranged a little top for her that I made. Mm -hmm. And that was 2004. You know, and then her mother came in to meet me. Tina knows. Yeah, because she's like, who's this queen making my daughter clothes? Because, right. you know, no, I, she used to make the clothes. She used to make the clothes. And then Kelly Michelle, and then the sister, the violent one. Salon. Salon. The violent one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Jay Z up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her. That elevator she footage came. is. And basically, that was the first year I opened one of my stores, and they actually kept the doors open. They just kept on coming back wow. and buying more and more and more clothing. So That's I was amazing. like, oh, I'm meant to have That's a boutique. That's a good omen. She's meant to have a boutique. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not right. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Bottom of the barrel. So gutter. did you say Gladonna? Fadonna, uh, yes, yeah. I believe she's a singer. Karen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, whatever. So you know we love Madonna even when That's she first came 40 out. 40 years of yeah, hits. This is like when she first came out. You okay. Know? This was like probably 91, 92. Okay. And I was on Melrose and she comes in with her backup dancers. And you know, she's real like attitude. Right? Yeah. You can see the like, you know, I'm like, okay. Did she walk in like that? Like, that yeah, you know how she walks, girl, yeah. and that papa don't preach. <laughs> That's exactly what she gave me, girl. Oh my God. So she's walking to me like that, girl. I'm like, I'm either gonna beat this up, honey, or I'm gonna sell her a dress. So um, my friend was in the store, Miss Elliot. She's like, I could, could I take your picture? It was a Polaroid. We had a Polaroid. Yeah. And she goes, no photos, you know, leave me alone, no photos. Like, really rude. Damn. So my friend, shady as she is, she uh -huh. goes, well, I'm going to take your f***ing picture anyway, f And she went, click. And Madonna was, like, really upset. She did a circle in the store, and then she left the store. Wow. So she gets in her little Mercedes, mm -hmm. the little two-seater Sharon Stone Mercedes. Sure. These queens put flowers on her car, you know, because it's like Madonna came oh, to Melrose. Oh, shit. So it's like the queen of Melrose sure. going to like New York, or yeah, yeah. going to Ralph. So anyway, um, she took the flowers and she threw them in the trash. Damn. Then she takes off in this car. Hits an old lady. And she does a like, U turn. <laughs> bitch. It's like, let's get over it. Bitch. Wow. It's a fucking picture, girl. Still love Madonna. Knew she was a bitch. Yeah. We don't care because I didn't expect anything less. I don't think anybody is like, I cannot believe Madonna was rude. I was so blindsided, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, and then I made the clothes for the fighter. You remember Deontay Wilder? He was the heavyweight champion of the world. And he says, I'm fighting this guy Fury. Long story short, he goes, I want to look so intimidating. Mm -hmm. 
So it's kind of like the fighters want to look like rappers. Okay. They want to look like performers. Sure, sure, sure. So we went from doing the rappers and Big Frida and all those stars mm. that I dress. Yeah. We were to doing the sports world. Wow. It's crazy. That's so surprising. I was just on Barstool Sports the You're other day. kidding. Yes, they interviewed me about all the outfits I did for How did that go? That's not so exactly fun. a gay-friendly outfit. No, they had two queens. They hired two queens Get to have a it's just here. like us, girl. Times they are we changing. We were geeky and they're changing, girl. <laughs> I thought it was going to be some butch, like, yeah. no. I felt wow. like I was talking to my sister from the Bronx. Wow. It was fabulous. So I made the clothes with Deontay. He's fighting Fury, one of the biggest fights, like, in the world. Okay. He walks in, and then he takes off the cape, you know, and then he goes in to fight, and basically I'm in the front row. He goes, I want Cosmo with me. I want Cosmo with me, you know. And I'm like, okay, she'll come. She's here. <laughs> okay, she's here. Okay, so anyway, um, he goes in the ring, and I'm sitting next to his wife, Telly, and we're watching the fight, and I told Deontay, if you're going to wear this outfit, it was like, it was voted the best ring walk outfit in boxing history. He better f win. You better win. Yeah. You gotta win, Deontay. Don't, don't disrespect the queen. Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! Why am I trying to get to John Rivers? I don't know. <laughs> ah! So did he? He just gets his <laughs> kicks in front of me. Fuck. Blood, ear, ambulance, police car. I'm like, oh my God. You know, his kids are all there. They're like, daddy. And I'm mortified. I'm crying. It was just like, I said, Deontay, the next time you just pick your outfit up at the store. No, I'm not <laughs> yeah. doing this. You've disrespected yeah. your majesty. Right. This is, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I can't go through this. Yeah. Right. The next day we leave, they take him to the hospital in my outfit. And then headlines, New York Times, Deontay Wilder loses. He says, outfit too heavy. <gasps> Oh, no, ma'am. Girl. No, 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 so no. I was like, he threw me under the f***ing bus. Yeah. How dare he? I would have won if that queen had dressed me in something lighter and more. Like, <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> so wow. if I would have known that, I would have went to Party City. You oh, know? Yeah. 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 So anyway, didn't know that TMZ is coming in the store. Now everybody is, you know? Okay. So what's happening, you're getting more negative press. But all press. It's good press. It's good press, yeah. So that's when Shaq called me. He oh goes, you made Deontay that outfit. Shaq on FaceTime, he goes, I want you to make me something because I'm a DJ. Ah. So I make him this big apparatus and he calls me. He's in Jimmy Kimball. Mm -hmm. He goes, come to Jimmy Kimball now. He goes, I want to try on my costume. Answers the door in his underwear, this girl. Ooh. Yes, girl, little tidies. And uh, tried on the outfit and loved the outfit. Mm -hmm. So then he flew me to Atlanta to go see his show. And I had to bring the outfit in like this coffin because it was huge. huge. He's huge. Yeah. Puts me in a hotel. We got to present him with this outfit. We filmed the whole thing. And then he does his DJ set. So I'm thinking it's going to be all hip-hop. I didn't know it was Raver Girls with glow sticks, girl, going, Shaq, Shaq. I, I got the whole demographic wrong, girl. Oh, my God. Anyway, Shaq is the best. Eight feet tall. Nine feet, you Jesus. know. Jesus. Hopefully he's proportioned. But anyway. Oh, my God. Imagine if he had, like, a two-inch weenie. I heard, basically, you know, the penal implant doctors yeah. that make your penis larger. Yeah. Are the, the biggest customers they have is in the sports world, the NFL. I believe it. Yeah. Because you can't be that tall and not be, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so you need a little girth or something. So I heard you could add an inch and a half. Mm -hmm. And then if you go to the doctor in Miami, they put, like, you know, the filler they put in your face. Yeah. They put that in your penis, too. So it's probably about two and a half inches you could add. Yeah. Oh, it's like a big floppy Wide fat thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a massage uh, by this lovely straight guy in New Orleans, mm -hmm. and he had a ton of silicone injected into his penis. Mm -hmm. You know, he was massaging me. It was kind of like sensual, kind of erotic. And he just, this thing flopped onto we my like butt. And I was like, what is that? Right. Look, it was like this, um, it was like a holiday ham or something. It was like, it was, it was so, it was like so wild. I love it. Was it like cut it, or uncut? It was, it was, I, well, at that point it was like kind of beyond cut or uncut. Yeah, it was like, it was um, big thing. it was like, um, imagine like a pig in a blanket, uh -huh. but like supersized. Right. Like crazy. I love those though. Yeah. I love those. It's great. I remember like I grew up Catholic in New York, you know, that all the boys were cut and all pretty penises and everything like that. So anyway, I started dating a guy who came to California and he was Dominican mm. and he was uncut. 
mm. dating him. He bought me shoes for Valentine's Day. I'll never forget. He was in the Navy. You know, we have oh. our first little love. Yeah. <laughs> and then after that, it just gets more tragic. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. um, now I just order in. Yeah. Absolutely. But um, yeah, so anyway, and he took out this penis. And then I'm like, I just saw like my first uncut uh-huh. And it looked like a Amadzilla. And I was like, what are we going to do with that? You know? <laughs> like, deal breaker. That was Really? It. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Because I was that mob wife. I was that queen. You know what I mean? Okay. I wasn't the mob You're wife. You're Edie Falco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was Edie Falco. <laughs> so anyway, so it kind, of, it kind of traumatized me. I'm like, how am I going to do? Like, I like the look of these guys. Yeah. But I don't like their penises. But you know, now I prefer... It's crazy how your taste buds change. Well, let me tell you, it's I, I always Because now I prefer a big like uncut. Absolutely. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, well, here's the thing. Like, I know a guy's uncut when he goes for my d- and he, he just like tries to like, you know, he jerks it like it's like wow, the last thing you, in our- you must be lucky because if you were like Well, I mean, yeah, like yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. but like it, how would you I had a guy that used to come to my store uh-huh. and then he would do the penis pump. At the store? No, no, he oh. would do it home. Okay. And like, you know, he wanted some of the queen. He also wanted a discount on his clothes. Oh, okay. so he what comes in so with the bulge. Like, mm-hmm. It's like you could land an aircraft on that thing. What the f is that? But anyway, um, yeah, or they'd be like, we give a discount by the inch. And my sales girls are really like hot, you oh know, so they play, you know. Love it. So it's a lot of festivities going on in the store. It's I like love Studio it. 54 meets Plato's Retreats. Oh my God. Right? Yes. Goes to Vaseline Alley. <laughs> but you leave with a fabulous outfit. I love that. Yeah. We got to get into one of my absolute all time favorite divas. I wouldn't call myself a stand now, but I have been closely scrutinizing the career of. Elizabeth Grant, a.k.a. Miss Lana Del Rey. Yes. Um, so basically, there is a dress line in my store, because mm-hmm. I don't only carry my stuff. It's called Juliet's Dream. Ooh. And everything is all floral and mm-hmm. romantic and just very... Very Asian. Lana. Yeah, very yeah. Lana. So it's just a kid that comes in and just buys it all. She goes, I'm Lana Del Rey's sister, because she looks like a star. Like, she's gorgeous. Yeah. So she goes, do you want to talk to Lana? She goes, she wants to talk to you. So I get on the phone, it's Lana Del Rey. I want to know who's making these dresses. They're so amazing. And Cosmo, I know who you are, and I love you. The sweetest, the sweetest. So now I've been doing, like, music and videos and putting, like, little headpieces. For sure. So they're calling me Cosmo Del Rey. When uh, I met Chuck Grant, she photographed me and Trixie for this thing, and um, we were just chit-chatting. Um, she was like, oh, you know, my sister's in entertainment. I was like, oh, really? Who's your sister? And uh, she said Lana Del Rey, and I was like, it's like it took every ounce of strength I had not to just lunge for her, pin her to the ground, and be like, tell me everything about your sister. Because I was obsessed with her. Yeah. I was obsessed with her. I love yeah. Lana Del Rey. Yeah, obsessed. I mean, her fans are a pretty intense passion um, in her fandom. She's yeah. great. Let's talk about stars who, in your opinion, could benefit from the Queen's style eye. Uh, you know, a wardrobe revamp or like There's an a image. Few of them. Yeah. Don't you see them out there? I sure do. And I would love for you to name their first, last, and middle names. <laughs> I can't with her. Well, let me tell I you can't. after Baychella, it's so grand. Yes. It's it's just so untoppable. Yeah. And so uh, when Lana came out on a, like a motorcade of like white trash motorcycles. I think I saw that. It was a little like yeah, it was, Miss Congeniality. It was a little like baton twirling. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah, very yeah. understated. But my vision of Lana is like the damsel in the red dress, like, you know, the femme fatale, like, you know, park and bark, like, um, you know, smoky eye, just sex. Did you pot. like the tree outfit that she wore for the? Was it the Met Gala? I don't believe I did. It was like branches in there, it and felt, then a whole veil situation. Yeah, it felt and like she was giving you forest. It felt like um, <laughs> woman of the woods who got caught in a bedsheet. You know what I mean? It was. Um, I mean, it's, it was good. She looked yeah, beautiful. Yeah, she gave um, you theatrics. Though. She, she yeah. always does. And the face is snatched, girl. Beautiful. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. she's beautiful. kind of a woman of a certain age now, right? Is she like thirty eight? Is she That's the, old in Hollywood, isn't it? It's a, a range that is tough to like negotiate because you're not like the uh, you know the young right. damsel, and you're also not the grand dame. Yes, you know? exactly. In music and in Hollywood, it's like if you're 20, wonderful. If you're 60, right. great. Nothing in between. But you know who really, really needs it, and she's on TV every day, and America's like living. Kelly Ripa. No, who? Kelly Clarkston. 
she girl, could use. She can never get it right, girl. What is going on, queen? I know. She could. And even the blow dry, those bangs. Like, I used I to be a hairdresser. Kind of sister wife, little dowdy. Um, it's a little, um, it's a little like, uh. Uh, chaperone of the spring formal. Yeah. It's, um, what is going yeah. on? You're Kelly Clarkson. I know. And, and you, not that everybody needs to dress like a f***ing, um, you know, a hoochie on Hollywood Boulevard. No, style. style. You know what I mean? Like, just have style. Like, what yeah. are you wearing? Like, what is going on? There's no, like, reason or rhyme. Maybe once or twice, you know, we'll give you a pass. Yeah. But, girl, every f***ing day. Yeah. It's like, what the f***? No, it's like forgettable florals with f***y shoes. Yeah. Kelly, I love you, Kelly. babe. And you know you're my sister. Yeah. But girl. Your wardrobe is uh is is uh toe up nasty and we need a revamp. Yeah, yesterday. Well, I mean Trixie Mattel, my uh, drag comedy partner, she went on Kelly Clarkson with in a bathing suit. So. I saw her. Jesus Christ. And she gave you leg across the whole couch. Like he almost hit the cameraman in the face. But I was like, I was like, so like, I was like, so you wore a bathing suit. Love she was, it. But she was like, Yeah, I, I didn't know what to do. I she said, usually looks amazing. A G-string. A G-string with nothing pops out. Really? It was fabulous. What do you think about whale tails? Yeah, the legs were wide open. I saw what she ate for breakfast. (laughs) It was fabulous. What about um, uh, Billie Eilish? Okay, so when she first came out, she Mm. came to my store. Really? So I seemed like a little, like, butchness. You know Mm. what I mean? And then when they presented her, first they were doing, like, Gucci pajamas. Yes. Because she's kind of, you know. Yeah. She's not. You know. Yeah. But then they try to give her like Marilyn Monroe vibes that probably last like a week. Yeah. Do you remember? I I and she's walking in the shoes like this girl. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like Edith Bunker. <laughs> yeah, girl. It was bad, girl. And I seen all that. You could just see when you meet somebody like this is a t- <laughs> Okay. She wants to get out of that mother dress right yeah. now yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of knew what she wanted mm. you know like for comfort yeah and still be fabulous yeah right? but she had other stylists with her oh and, you know sometimes the stylists come in and they need stylists girl I mean it's like oh my god what are you picking out for her and then she she comes out she's like I'm gay I have a girlfriend you know what I mean and I you, like you just know that when you see them though yeah I, I like her look I mean and I like that she's not um they didn't like Hoochify her, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're not like, I, so we love the long well, shorts. Aside from that Marilyn look, remember? Oh, they're yeah. trying to do that pin up look da, da, for da, da, her. Da, da, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, and now she looks comfortable and she looks also comfortable in her own skin. Exactly. Also, yeah. her talent is unbelievable. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, what about, oh, Harry <laughs> Styles. <laughs> Arguably one of the most attractive young musicians this planet has ever known. Wearing in what in my opinion, are the most ill-fitting, unflattering, queer-baiting, uh, David Bowie knockoff jumpsuits. I'm, yeah. I hate them. Yeah. I hate them so much. <laughs> I want to burn them all. I think they're trying to do like a 70s, like you, like know, like I said, Bowie. Like sure, absolutely. Mick Jagger. Yeah. Like old London look. Yeah. You know. But guess what? Like pop star. They but, looked great. Yeah. Right. Exactly. You know. Right. And their pants were long enough. Yeah. Like he literally looks like Urkel. I know. It's like everything's ill-fitting. Ill, ill-fitting. Yeah, Rotten. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we get a rep. I don't get it. Yes. I don't get it. Yeah. And I wish he so would. So give me Harry Styles. Give us Harry Styles now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm thinking like um, a long denim dresses with a, a bonnet, sort of like a, a little house in the prairie kind of thing. Right. You um, know, sister wife. Meet hand, Handmaid's Tale. Yes. 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 Okay, so we're going to play a game called Asshole or Not. So basically, I'll whip out some behaviors and scenarios, and you tell me if it's an whole thing or not. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Non-size inclusive designers. I think, you know, um, human sizes, not only Barbie on crack. Yeah. So I'm going to be like, whole. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know what? Right now, the girls are more voluptuous. Yeah. And everybody's doing it. Lying about your natural hair color. Um, I'm going to say, how about this? Lying about your age. I wouldn't say... Tall, you know, if you can get away with it, so be it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, if you really are 60 and mm-hmm. you look 40, mm-hmm. why not? You okay. know what I mean? That's yeah. fine. That's, that's an individual's prerogative. Okay. Yeah. Fear. F***ing your way to the top. Um, I guess well, it depends on the top. Like, what are we talking about? Bloomingdale's? Or are we talking about, like, you know? Uh, it, well, it seems like it works. I th- I've listen. seen it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. People have, a, if you have a large toolbox of tools that will help you succeed, whip out that tool. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, I don't see any problem with yeah, it. I don't, I mean, you either. know, sunglasses inside the club. I, I, I kind of think that's cool. Right? What about blue yeah. blockers? What are the blue blockers? Those big, giant, old people ones. Oh, wait. Like, do you know? Do you never heard of blue blockers? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no. Hosting an overseas destination wedding. Uh, if you could afford it and it's done right. Yeah. J Lo. Where did she have hers? Did she have it in Italy or something? But I mean, like saying, "Hey, you're invited to my wedding. Um, you know." Buy the seven thousand dollar plane ticket, oh, yeah. and you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets a little sticky. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, I'm getting married. Come to my wedding. It's right. in Croatia, <laughs> like yeah. next week. It's kind of yeah, asshole. Yeah, that's kind of asshole. Yeah. Somebody who won't smoke a cigarette but will never leave home without a vape. No. Asshole. Yeah. Just smoke a mother. Just cigarette smoke bit. the <laughs> cigarette. Come Listen, on. in the fifties, doctors smoked in the emergency room. Right. My mother smoked on the nurse's station you in the come 70s. come my store, it smells like Ash Wednesday. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, a, know, it's like an 80s they, AA uh, Yeah, they mo- complain meeting. about the smoke. I'm like, I'm going to raise the price on that dress. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean. The thing about the vape, you don't know what's going to happen. Like, we already saw samples of children yeah. and teenagers in the hospital yeah. with, like, lung disease. Popcorn really lung, losing limbs. Doing all the heat. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're vaping everywhere. Everywhere, and they can't like get enough, and they're just vaping inside you next to me, where I can't smoke a cigarette, but you can whip that f-ing vape out. Yeah, hello. I was f-ing a guy in the butt, and he was vaping. <laughs> <laughs> this is not it. This is not it. Girl, I can't. Um, oh my god. Whole or not, people who say that angel hair is their favorite pasta. Um, no, it doesn't bother me. Well, Angel Hair is good. You just got to know how to cook it. It's yeah. got to be al dente. Yeah, I, don't th- I didn't and imagine that this would be a too. divisive one. Um, what about, ooh, well, actually, I want to ask you, in terms of L.A. flake culture, because when I moved here, I was like, oh, I've become a flake, like, like almost immediately. Canceling plans, when do you think is, like, the cutoff point between being an a- or not? Like, say, for example, it's what, Wednesday today? Thursday. It's Thursday. Yeah. We make plans next Thursday to have drinks. Yeah. You want to cancel. When is the least holy time? Like, when's the limit? I don't know. Like, I am, like, I used to be the biggest flake because, you know, I was, like, you know, downtown. I was doing drugs, mm-hmm. and I never showed up. Like, you had to look, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to look me up in the yellow pages. Right? Totally. Whereas Cosmo, she's yeah. on a milk container. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Check she, the obits. She's on cops. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. True story. So, yeah. anyway, I wouldn't show up. But now, like, your word means something in this town, for real, I believe. 99% of it is showing up. Yeah. Going to a party where there's illicit activity going on and not bringing any cocaine or any party favors and just mooching off people, is that a Uh, no. Oh, really? <laughs> no, if you ain't got the money and a is an addict, and you know, you need a hit like Ricky Martin needs a hit. Why not? <laughs> Girl. Do it. I drank people's drinks before, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, why not? (laughs) Um, So we need to talk about uh, a pretty incredible trajectory of a religious nature. So am I to understand that Catholic and then Jehovah's Witness? Yeah. Okay. What in the hell was that like? Because to my understanding, I have It was brutal to a little gay queen. Brutal. What was your experience? I can't even... What was that so like? So my grandmother's a devout Italian. I grew up like okay. with Goodfellas. For yeah. real. Love. I had FBI agents in my house, in my okay. basement, looking for my father. Fierce. So anyway, it was quite fabulous. Cause I thought I was a mob wife, and I was getting yeah. driven around, you know, and like these beautiful cars and like mafia grew up, you know, but one week you're rich and then the next week your mother's on food stamps. Sure. You know, that's the lifestyle. Volatile lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. My grandmother was a devout Catholic and she would go to church every Sunday. So of course she was the matriarch. Mm -hmm. So we all had to have Sunday dinner. She made the meatballs. Mm -hmm. They weren't burnt. And she, you know, we did this every Sunday. So, like, I'm, like, eight years old, nine years old, and then these Jehovah's Witnesses come to the house, oh, and they knock on the door. That's what? They what? never left. Uh, uh, she diverted, changed. Are you... The, 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 the cold, Catholic. Cold calling salesman with a re, from, from a girl, bizarre religion, and it worked? She was a good salesman, girl. Damn. Yeah. So, anyway, before you know it, Sundays we had to have Bible study. Oh. Well, like this group of people that we had to go to the Kingdom Hall. Now, you can't be gay 
You can't have a birthday. Now, could you imagine a nine, eight, nine-year-old kid taking away birthday, no. Christmas? Halloween. All of it. N- none of it. So flag my, day, my, my, gone. Right. But yeah. my mother was a mob wife, and she was, you know, teasing the hair and yeah, drinking yeah, yeah. the vodka. I kind of knew it would never work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like she wanted to respect my grandmother, uh-huh. but she's like, that, I am I'm still going to tease my hair, and I need my vodka, right? <laughs> And then my father, my grandmother's son, is in the Bronx, mm-hmm. you know, living his little gangster life. Sure, sure. You know, mm-hmm. we, it was two years of that, you know, God. and you can't touch yourself. There is no homosexuality. So I being the queen that I am, or the queen that we are, yeah. you know, and um, they're like, you can't be gay. Uh-huh. So I'm like, and the Bible also says, here it is, the, uh, the truth shall set you free. And I am gay, and I'm going to be gay. And that's, that's and you know, I was that kid. At yeah, the yeah, table, yeah. You yeah. know, my mother's like, these people, you know oh, what I mean? God. I'm going to go back to, you know. And so we went back to being like Catholic. But for a while, my grandmother changed. It sounds it was, kind of like a fun, free, grim affair. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of like very cultish. Mama, oh, sorry, queen, your grace. Um, the next uh, segment we've got a hotline where people have called in with some confessional stories wondering if they are the asshole. So we've got two phone calls. Let's hear the first one. Ooh. Yeah? Master microphone. Yeah. Christopher Nolan, watch out. This is real Hollywood magic. Yes, honey. One time I had this hookup with a guy and by the end he asked me, do you want to see me again or be more, do more than just a hookup? And I explained to him that for me to see you again, I, like more than a hookup, I have high standards. And he asked me, am I part of those high standards? And I looked at him in the eyes and I said, no. Ooh. The second after I felt so bad, I was like, oh my gosh, am I an asshole? Because am I, am, I the, am I a bad person to say that? But yeah, at the end, we, we just, he just looked, he looked away for a second and then said, oh, okay, well, then let's make it for me to reach those high standards. Okay. So there's this thing called social tact. Um, and I don't believe that this person is familiar with that concept. You don't have to lie. Right. But if you ask me point blank, do you think I'm, like, so ugly? I'm not going to be like, you know, well, Yes. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Like, that's crazy. I think it's, that's awful. Yeah. All right, let's hear another one. Okay, so this guy, um, he's been texting me all day on a Saturday asking me if I, um, if I, if he can come over, you know, if I have free time. So at first I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm busy today. But then at night, maybe around nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, I said, okay, yeah, man. Like, and, and I'm, you know, I'm into him and stuff. So I'm like, okay, let's, uh, yeah, come over. And, he showed up with a book bag. Um, it's fine, whatever. I mean, I go everywhere with a book bag myself. I, I didn't really think anything of it. I'm like, are there video games in there? I don't know. So I'll uh, keep in mind, I've been on one date with this guy. So this is our second quote-unquote date. The first time was an actual date. This was just him coming over. Obviously, we we're going to f- So he comes over, he's got the bag, uh, whatever. So the night's going. It's like, you know, you, so yeah, there's a, there's a lot of f- whatever. And then like at 2 o'clock in the morning, 2.30, and I was like, all right, so the next train is around, you know, it's around now. I can, I can, I'll walk you to the train station. And he's like, wait, what? Like, uh, are you kicking me out? And I'm like, no, uh, what do you mean? And he goes, oh, I, I was going to stay over. So then I realized that, that that was a sleepover bag that he had brought. But we never discussed him staying over. Like, I, And I never actually had somebody stay over my place before. Um, and, and it's fine. I like him, but I, I didn't. I just felt like that's something you discussed beforehand. It's not like a, hey, I don't know. Well, I'm the ask, who knows? Uh, first of all, no, you are Leo Tolstoy, and that was War and Peace. I kind of like him because he reminded me of my memes. My, right, yeah, I mean, it's like, like it just I, the art of kicking somebody out of a house yeah. is... But it's, it's true. Like, you ever have somebody come over, though? Are like you, a f- and are you f- kidding like, me? Do your thing, right? But yeah. they want to, like, stay. How about this, Oh, sorry, your, your grace, your grace. Yeah. How about this? Um, I had a great regular booty call situation for a couple years. He comes over one night, drunk as hell, and I'm like, F- I'm not going to have sex with a really, really drunk guy because I was sober. Uh, he uh, falls into the bed, immediately falls asleep, starts snoring like would wake the dead. I go to the couch fuming. Next morning, he wakes up, 
He's like, hey, so you want to get breakfast? I was like, do I want to get breakfast? <laughs> you just f- kicked me out of my own bedroom, showed up dead right. drunk, didn't f- me. Yeah. Like, I don't want to get breakfast. You're going to get the hell out of here and block my number. Right. If he would have woke up in the morning and f- the sh- you, queen, no. you know, because at the end of the day, that's all we want. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then get the f- Yeah. Out. You show you know? up. Out of me, and right. then you get the hell out of there. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. But yeah. I get like that's true. Like some guys come over and they think they're gonna stay. Oh my! I really don't even want to look at you. Sweet. And, like after and not only a conversation. When the orgasm Unless hits. I really like you. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's who you can't get rid of me. Right. Yeah. And then you're the perpetrator of right. yeah the straggling. <laughs> yeah. But like yeah, my friend and I it's like once we. I'm in a bonnet, blowing on hot tea, pointing at the door, in bed. You know what I mean? It's like, it's a wrap. Just, Just get, get out. out. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. All right, this next segment is, are we assholes? So let's start with the basics. Are you, or have you been on the grid, like the grinder grid? No, I do, like, I used to do Craigslist. You know, R.I.P. And these hardworking men come Casually over, and they just counters. love you, and oh, they give yeah. you money. And then I found a new one called Lo Canto. Lo. It's a, Span- oh. Oh, okay. it's a Spanish Craigslist. Ooh. So if you want to get like workers and stuff like that, okay. I used to put an ad up. I'm like Ginger, housewife from from Burbank. Yeah, and she's just bored tonight. Yeah, and, you know, and then like disguise your number, yeah. and before you know, like all these hot workers are calling you like in the afternoon. They're putting up shelves. They're yeah. they're f-ing you senseless. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love that. Yeah. Um, have you ever ghosted or been ghosted by someone? Oh yes. What's your What's the most flagrant ghosting behavior you've done? Well, I would just give them the address next door and uh-huh. be like, oops, I forgot I wrote the wrong number. Uh, you know, and then I would see them walking in and see if they look like their photo. I've heard of this technique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'll be like, oh, my God. And they're like, oh, my, where are you? Where are you? You know what I mean? And then they get home. Oh, I'm sorry I wrote the wrong, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not to, like, deliberate because I don't like it done to me. I have, You know what I'm guilty of? I have, like, um, I used to work, live above a drag bar that I performed at. And on, on Wednesday night, that was the night where, you know, you tiptoe down in your best for drag and try to snag a guy. I had made Craigslist plans with two guys, double booked, because one always cancels. Um, but I went into the bar and found someone even better. So I had, like, I was straddling the guy at the bar, and I forgot the other guy was coming over. So I had to, like, fake diarrhea on the phone with him while I'm trying to seduce this guy. It was a whole mess. And yeah. then the other guy showed up, like, at the tail end uh, of, it was a lot. It's kind of a nice problem yeah. to have. Yeah, I don't think that's ghosting. I think that's just being us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were the days when oh. you were like in drag and they were My coming God. out. And like, remember um, Yukon Mining Company? Yukon Mining Company? Do you remember? Uh, I'm old. Where RuPaul it used to be 7969, the nightclub, the bar. No. There was just all gorgeous men and Love. they were just giving you money and they would have baby seats in the car and it was, it was fabulous. So, set the record straight, Your Grace. Was it easier to date in the 80s or today? I think 80s. Yeah. Because it was like the club, it was yeah. the dance floor. Yeah. So you actually connected, you're yeah. dancing, yeah. you're touching. Yeah, I mean, I think about like uh, Basic Instinct, which I don't think it was the 80s, but you got Sharon Stone doing coke in the bathroom with the girl, and then it's like, it's all, you know. It was all it's that. It's a vibe. It was it's like all a that. scene. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was physical. So you met in the club, you actually yes. dated them for a while, you went home with them. Did you ever fall in love on the dance floor at Studio 54? You know what? I did fall in love a few times. Really? Yeah. But I'm actually too young for Studio 54. I mean, Studio 54 happened, was like a, a legendary thing, but it happened for like nine months, right? I was 10. Oh. <laughs> Well, but I did fall in love on the dance floor. That really? happens a lot where you just like connect. Yeah. And then like you're dancing. These uh, days, I mean, in a pack. There's circuit, no dance floor. No, the circuit party with a sea of guys all finger each other. And then with, they have their timers and their droppers. And there's like a hundred people in the, in, the, in the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. Let's pivot from to um, sobriety. Sobriety. Which is actually not that far of a pivot. When did you, uh, when did you start getting sober and what was your DOC um, back in the day? So basically, I was cocaine. Cocaine? Yeah, I was cocaine, and I learned that in New York. Thank you, New York. And it was a normal. Yeah. Okay. Is this 80s we're talking? Cocaine in the 80s seems like legendary. Like everybody had a gram and the matchbook cover and go in the bathroom, and it just worked. Yeah. Like you were Beyonce on stage. Sure, sure. You were invincible, you were horny, you did did all the things, Mm -hmm. right? But then eventually, like, we didn't know we were going to be so addicting, Mm. you know? 
like, you know, that's when Betty Ford came around and mm. was like rehab and stuff like that. That was years later. Mm. But people were tortured, you know, spending all their money. Like, I was literally a laboratory rat, like going back and forth to the drug dealer. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I couldn't stop. Yeah. You know, but then somebody introduced me to Freebase. I knew uh, a show girlfriend who was like, listen, I do not smoke crack. I freebase. Right, yeah. There was a very, very right. distinct yeah, yeah, in her yeah. mind uh, exactly. very like, thing. Right. And um, she taught me one night how to chase the dragon, which was how to freebase. And it wasn't for me. It was. It was interesting. She went from like super bubbly and um, and entertaining, and then as soon as she took that hit, it was like the paranoia bar. city. Yeah. She got quiet. She just looked through the blinds for like twenty five minutes, and yeah. she was like. And I was like, is this fun? It goes so down in hell. the beginning, it's all fun. Yeah. But then you get paranoid and you end up in a closet. Yeah. And you think like the helicopters are coming in. Oh, no, you know they're coming. Then you know they're yeah. coming in. Yeah. And then your family's at the door and yeah. you're going to be embarrassed. They're all going to laugh yeah. at me, just like yeah. Carrie. CIA, you know? FBI. All of them. Um, and meanwhile, you're there for three days and nobody shows up. It's like you're hallucinating. You think you're hanging out with Lindsay Lohan and you're like, one rock for you, Lindsay, one rock for me. You literally think yeah. you're hanging out with her. There was, and a, then yeah. she's gone. And you're like, and you're like, oh my where god, where was she? Where she Thousand dollars, yeah. and I said, she's not even there. Yeah. Oh my god. So anyway, yeah, it was bad. I spent a whole day preparing my um, uh, downtown law for Anna Winter's visit. Um, and I was like, Anna's going to be here. Oh my god. And I was like waiting outside, and um, my friends like, what are you doing? And I was like, the editor of Vogue's coming today. I'm really nervous. They're like, I think we need to call, you know, the guys in the white suit and get the hell yeah, out of here. It was so crazy. I've done it. Yeah. I've been, you know, take take her away. Yeah. yeah. When did you get sober for the first time? So, you know, it was like a few times. Of you course. Know, basically. So I'm so defiant, you know. And mm. then, like, I still have this crazy work ethic. So I'm still going to Melrose making all this money, you know. And you can't talk to an addict when they have my, a pocket full of money, right? Yeah, it's, you know? it's dangerous. And it got to the point where you just got so bad, though. Like, I was literally, like, I smoked up a clothing store, you know. Yeah. And uh, I would never forget Danny Bonaduce, you know, the Partridge family. Of course. Well, he's sober. He helped me. He goes, look. I'm going to give you this $400 Cosmo, and I'm going to buy you this case of beer. He goes, and Monday morning, you're going to Tarzana. So at Tarzana's a rehab. Okay. I did the eight ball. You got your last hurrah. And I called him, and we went to Tarzana Medical. What was the like level of um, accommodation? Was it like bare bones? Was it uh, like the, the facility? It's state-funded. Which means so like, it's not like a Siberian it's not, prison. It's, yeah, it's yeah. not. It's not glamorous. Not glamorous at all. Yeah, but I went to the glamorous ones. They didn't work, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's like, like you where, know, wherever you go, there you are. This and there's this that in Malibu, and it's just you're spending millions of dollars. But the answer is really like kind of in the book. And also, uh, yeah, you know, one dollar a day. Nine dollars on book and one dollar a day and that's the answer yeah you know yeah but i was in the bushes i was downtown la in tents and they weren't even tents they were core cardboard boxes yeah. back in the day yeah, yeah, yeah. so it just really like you know it's like a comprehensible demoralization like how i get yeah, yeah, yeah. you know i was sucking it behind the dumpster yeah you know? which no you know but yeah. it's fine my first rehab i got sober i learned how to live sober i got an apartment did you do sober living or did you just do the, what do you yeah, do, I residential? Yeah, sober living. Yeah. So basically they give you a house to move in mm -hmm. and four of you get this house in the valley. It's almost like the real world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's yeah, fabulous. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good, yeah. you know? But don't you think though that like, I mean, I found, and it's often said that like addicts, especially like um, low bottom addicts who get sober, have such a capacity for functioning, for achievement and for success during sobriety, you know. It gives you a new drive. Yeah. It gives it, you a new lease on life. I came back from the gates of hell. Mm -hmm. And I know if I could do it. You know, and I've seen people in rehab with me do it. And that's our purpose. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's why you're sitting here mm -hmm. to help the queen that's watching RuPaul's Drag Race. Be like, I want to be like her, you know? She's yeah. successful. She looks healthy. Yeah, you know she, what I mean? She's got a two-inch penis. Yeah, she's got gets, a two-inch penis, yeah. whatever. she got a hump on her back. Throw, yeah. throw some glitter on it. You know what I mean? It's but, okay. But and also, you get to hear some wild ass stories. I went to a meeting on Christmas Day in WeHo, and this from the podium, God bless her soul, 
w- rattling off the most tall t- lies. She was just lying about her whole story, being kidnapped in Croatia. She was a supermodel. She was like 400 pounds. It was like a whole like <laughs> yarn that was so, you know, it, 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 it was it entertaining. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, um, dating sober in Los Angeles. It's kind of scary as f- mm-hmm. Because basically, even like all your relationships, even your friendships now, you'll be like, that, but I will drink and smoke and you know what I mean? I'll show her, you know what I mean? Now you really got to be authentic in your relationships, you know, and friendships alone, girl, you know, we know a lot of queens, girl. Okay. I know this one queen. I love her to death. But it's like, I constantly got to pray in our relationship. Do I want to like keep on being friends with her? But she's so there for me. But she's so f-ing annoying. I've never met anybody you know? like that. <laughs> yeah. But then when I'm not with her, I miss her. <laughs> so I constantly got to put that um, prayer into all my relationships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. D- uh, dating another alcoholic in recovery or addict in recovery can be a little uh, tricky. Yeah. I would Have pre- you? I uh, no, and I don't want to. Yeah, I would rather. Um, my dream is to date someone who is just kind of naturally abstinent. Maybe has a glass of wine at a party or something, yeah. but then, it, but is not affected by the disease. Right. Um, that's what I'm dating now. I'm dating some guy okay. that's not in the program. He thinks yeah. it's a cult, and he hates it. It's the only cult that suggests tithing for one dollar. That's pretty. You know what I mean? Like it's it is like culty. I get that. What, you gotta wear it like a loose garment. Like you yeah, gotta wear it to wear it. Take what you want to leave the rest. Exactly. And you know, how and many we can't do it alone? You know, we no. need like a sister. Like, girl, right. I'm gonna go out and relapse. Yeah. Could you come with me to the bookstore in Glendale so we could suck together before we relapse? Yeah. You know what I mean? Teamwork makes you the dream have work. A sister, yeah. You know. And also, if you think about it, a, a room um, of recovering ac- crackheads, meth, uh, meth heads, alcoholics, drunks. A uh, hundred of them in a room, and rarely, if almost never, does that meeting end up in a knockdown, drag out brawl. Right. That itself is a miracle. Yeah. It's crazy. And the book says we're people that wouldn't normally mix. We wouldn't normally hang out with each yeah. other at all. But yeah. we're all in that room. Yeah. Because we all have that one common denominator. Yeah. We're desperate. We need help. Yeah. We want to get off these drugs yeah and live life sober and authentically yeah and it took me a long time to do that i was 50 when i got sober 50 so now these kids are coming in on fentanyl and they're 18 and you could see they're holding onto their chair and they're sweating yeah. and they're scared you know yeah. they don't want to go out because they know they're going to die yeah so it, it, it got younger when i got sober it was old men in a basement they yeah, were buying smoking, smoking. they sound like ass yeah. wednesday like betty davis yeah no now you go in and it's like literally 16 year olds and you see the fear, like, I want to stop, but I don't know how to stop. Yeah. So that's when you, you know, I got to be there and be like, the queen's here, girl. Yeah. yeah. Suck yeah. instead, girl. Yeah. And then we'll go to Sex Anonymous, girl. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but it's like, there's a meaning for everything. Yeah, I you know, know, I know, I know. But it's like, you know, you have to, like, that's our purpose is like yeah. to help another alcoholic. Yeah. So we're going to wrap it up. Yeah. I, I just have to say, you are a, Paragon, a legend, and it was so fun talking to you. Thank you. Where can the children find you online? Are you on social medias? Yes. What's so that? go What's to Queen of Melrose. Queen of Melrose. Yes. And um, we have a YouTube show, okay. actually, and then uh, TikTok. And then my store are Queen of Melrose. What's um, the address? And, and Cosmo's Glam Squad on Melrose. Then there's Cosmo and Zanato on Melrose. Okay. And then we just opened Shoe LA, we're for shoes. Okay, so the real question I have is, when <laughs> are you going to hook me up with some fierce um, outfits? I would, whenever you want. Like, I'm literally going to give you my phone number, okay. and you're going to call me. Okay. You still do shows and stuff, right? I, sh- I sure do. Or just for Kiki. Oh, yeah, wiggle around so the house, yeah. So you're going to come Saturday. Thank you so much, Your Majesty. Yes, John. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. The Queen of Melrose.